Amen. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who is our strong tower who will be with us in the time of need. We praise his holy name because he is a great God. He is worthy to be praised. Lord, I ask that you just decrease me. Hide me behind the sacred desk and increase Holy Spirit. Let them hear a word from you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Time is going by, y'all. It flies. Time flies when you're having fun. Now, I say fun serving the Lord. Time just goes by. It is filled with swift transitions. We know that. But it's really hard to believe that we are at the end of one month and headed into a new one, preparing to enter the holiday season. I don't know if you've been getting those Christmas brochures in the mail, <laughs> but they are coming through. And so even before we get to Thanksgiving, they're advertising about uh, the holiday season. But we've survived a lot. We do agree that we have been through a lot during these last couple of months during this uh, fall season. We've been through a lot and we have survived it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm happy about that. But pretty soon, this whole campaign thing will be behind us and all of the rhetoric that kind of has come along with it, it'll be behind us. There'll still be things that we have to work on things that need to be solved. But this part of the campaign will be behind us. How many know that God has a way of bringing you out of some things, bringing you through some things, over some situations? God has a way of bringing you through. He has a way of bringing you through some health situations and some financial situations. He has a way of just being with us and never leaving us he brings us through some relationship situations, family and job situations, bringing us through our trials and tribulations and the vicissitudes of life. He lifts burdens and he eases pain. And that's something to shout about right there, that he is there to help us lift our burdens and ease our pains. We can cast our cares on him and we are grateful for that. We are acknowledging both domestic violence and breast cancer awareness. Domestic violence impacts people from all backgrounds, male and female. No one is exempt. All races are impacted. It impacts approximately 10 million people in the United States every year. It often is, uh, we have to also think about the impact that uh, domestic violence has on people. It uh, is often hidden and it goes unnoticed. We must be vigilant to determine if it is going on around us, if it be happening, and we not even be aware of it. So we want to keep our eyes open and keep praying to Holy Spirit that he will direct us in the way to go to help those that may be in need uh, get help. We are praying for awareness and for the physical and psychological healing of survivors and their families. Uh, October is also Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month. You may know some people in your family or be, uh, have neighbors or co-workers that have uh, struggled with the battle of breast cancer. So we're celebrating the survivors and we're praying for those who have succumbed to it because some have lost their lives due to breast cancer. So we're praying for uh, their loved ones to be comforted during this time. But we encourage all of the women, all of the women in your family, of those that may be around you, encourage them to get their annual uh, breast exams and encourage them to just stay on top of this important health uh, concern because uh, it's just something that we just don't want to uh, neglect. I have lost one friend to breast cancer, and I have another who is a recent survivor of breast cancer. So I praise the Lord for that. So it hits close to home. So while we acknowledge both 
um, domestic violence and breast cancer awareness. We just want to know that and uh, realize that, that real life and death issues are involved. It's more than just us putting on the covers. We like to wear the covers. But as I said, there's some that are really close to us that have been impacted. My friend that uh, is a survivor, she had posted, uh, don't just put a pink ribbon on the products that cause breast cancer, take those products off the market. And that really, uh, you know, hit close to home for me because sometimes we do we celebrate them once a month and we keep going on. Those uh, breast cancer products are still being put on the market. And then they say they're, you know, celebrating breast cancer by putting a ribbon on the products, but the products are still uh, a danger to people. And so that was deep to me. So while we all go through things in life, don't we, we all go through life, as long as you've been, you are going to be facing some situations, some trials and tribulations. But it's hard to imagine what those who are experiencing breast cancer are really going through, or even domestic violence, unless you have been through it yourself. And so, you know, we want to empathize sometimes. We want to put ourselves in the shoes, but it's hard to do that if you've never experienced it. Uh, some have said they don't know what tomorrow will bring. Now, I've actually heard people say those words while they're going through this season in life, where they've lost their loved ones and different things uh, in our church family. Uh, one of my churches that I have belonged to, we uh, lost one of the members to breast cancer. She was a two time survivor and, and finally succumbed to it. And her uh, sister was saying she doesn't know how she's going to make it. She's making it today, but she doesn't know what it's going to be like tomorrow when she wakes up and her sister is not there. And so we're certainly praying for the families. And this is what people are actually experiencing. But we know that God holds the future. We don't know, but that's where our trust in God comes in, that he will be with us, that he will never forsake us. So we trust God. We trust God to just... Um, Bring us through it. We have to lean and depend on the Lord. We have to go to Him on our own behalf and on behalf of our family and our friends. So we praise the Lord because He has kept us. He has kept us, and no matter what we have gone through, the Lord has been uh, with us. And so we praise Him for being a keeper. He has been a keeper. We don't know what we would have done without having the Lord on our side. We probably would have survived some of the things that we go through. So today we offer a sacrifice of praise. How's that? We offer a sacrifice of praise. We lift up only hands for the, what the Lord has done. And I call it a survival praise to the Lord, a survival praise. And that's my son, the topic that I'd like to spend a few moments on this morning, lifting up a survival, a survival praise to the Lord. And my scriptural text comes from the book of Psalms. We read, we talked about the book of Psalms this morning, how we can get so much out of the book of Psalms that they uh, offer praise, thanksgiving, lament. But we are approaching Psalm 34 as a psalm. Praise. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. We're coming from the King James Version, and it reads this way I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Mm -hmm. They looked up to him and were delighted and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man 
that trusted in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man and I and woman that put their faith and trust in the Lord. In Psalm 34, David, David is praising God. David is praising God for deliverance from a life-threatening situation. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, breast cancer and uh, domestic violence are life-threatening situations. Perhaps he was uh, facing an encounter with King Achish of Gath, or also uh, known as Abimelech. Psalm 34 is a hymn of thanksgiving for God's deliverance of David in his time of need. And we can all thank God for delivering us in our time of need. So we can relate. David is praising God for instilling hope. He's praising God for instilling hope for deliverance from oppressive, oppressive situations. Domestic violence and breast cancer are tough situations, oppressive in many ways. The psalmist praises God because he sought the Lord and the Lord answered him. The Lord answered him and delivered him of all of his fears. Whew, that is something to be thankful for. Ever sought the Lord late in the midnight hour? Have you ever been there? Has he ever delivered you from your fears? Have you ever had to just lay there and call upon the name of Jesus? No other name that you do. Just say, Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. Didn't know what to do and <laughs> or where to go or who to turn to. But David, when we look at him, he depended on the Lord because the Lord hears our prayers and he is a deliverer. He's delivered us, many of us, from some fiery furnaces. Amen. He's delivered us from some lion's dens. Then you have a survival praise. If you've ever been delivered from some fiery furnaces and some lion's dens, you have a survival praise. Amen. If you've ever been saved from trouble, you have a survival praise. You have a reason to praise the Lord. You have survived and you have a praise, a survival praise. The Lord is near. He is close to the brokenhearted. He saves the contrite in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but it's the Lord. It's the Lord that delivers him from all of them. Psalm 34 is a Song of survival. Verse 8 ends with the words, Happy are those who take refuge in him. Happy are those who take refuge in him. God will always, he will always be bigger than your problems. He will always be bigger than your trials and your fears. So let everything, let everything, everybody, then hands breath praise the Lord. Despite your circumstances, what you may be going through, what we go through, or even how we feel, despite all of that, let every fiber of your being praise the Lord. Thank him. Thank him for life itself. Thank him for allowing you to see another day. Thank him for opening up your eyes, for protecting your family. Thank the Lord. Let every fiber of your being praise the Lord. A survival praise. We praise the Lord because he is worthy. He's worthy, or he's worthy to be praised. We were created. We were created to praise the Lord. And there's power. There's power in our praise. So keeping our mind staying on the Lord keeps us in perfect peace. Praise is closely tied to thanksgiving. It expresses our thanks for all the Lord has done, all he is going to do. We know that he will do. We trust in him. We place all of our cares in his hand. If we look at Psalm 150, it says, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in 
his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise the Lord with instruments. Praise the Lord with song. Praise him with dance. We are to sing songs to one another as well as encourage each other. And he talked about building up the body and building up each other. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And we are to encourage one another. We need each other to survive a survival praise. When we think of the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for us, when we think of his faithfulness, we can't help but praise. I mean, I know I'm not just speaking for myself. If you think about what the Lord has done for you in your life, all right. I'm sure you have a praise. Holy Spirit helps us to just keep pushing, to keep pushing and pressing beyond our obstacles to reach a higher and greater place in the Lord. We seek him, we seek more of him for his goodness and for his mercy, for his loving kindness. Praise causes us to become less, and that's okay with me. Praise causes us to become less and God to become more because he's bigger. He's bigger than the universe. He's bigger than our Father, but tell you, all power is in his hand and he is sovereign. He's in control. A survival praise. To survive is to overcome. To overcome. We've heard that word before, we shall overcome. We praise our way through as a people. There are so many times and, and so many things going on in our communities that we've had to praise our way through some trauma. There's so much trauma going on, people going through things from their childhood. We have to bring, praise the Lord for bringing us through racism and discrimination and oppression. We've been singing, we shall overcome for a long time, and we keep singing it. We have to keep singing it. We've been praising our way through as a people for a long time. There are breast cancer survivors, there are abuse survivors, uh, domestic abuse survivors, and other survivors of all kinds of abuse, tornado survivors, earthquake survivors, and the list goes on and on. We've been through and we have survived some storms. We've survived some storms. Then if we, we don't uh, see the word survivor, we do see overcomer though. Overcome in the Greek means to prevail, to pass over, to gain to the victory. We are survivors more than conquerors, victorious overcomers. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today, today, victory today is mine. Despite us, despite our own shortcomings, our own unfaithfulness. We serve a faithful God who stays faithful to us despite us. He's allowed us to survive. He's a loving and he's a forgiving God. We can praise him for that. This week I went to the rehabilitation center. I witnessed praise firsthand. We started talking to residents. I started talking with them, you know, talk with them and pray with them, uh, you know, uh, just to just build them up in the spirit. But we started thanking God. We started thanking God for everything. We thank God for food. We thank God for clothes, shelter. We thank God for our health as well as it was. And thinking they're not all in the perfect, uh, you know, state of health. But they thank God for as well as it was. We thank him for life itself, for just being alive. We praise the Lord for how far he has brought us. And some of them are up in age and they're in now a, a rehabilitation center. But look how far God has brought them through life, all of the things that they have been through, all of the ups and downs, and they're still going through it. 
But we have to thank the Lord for that, how he had delivered them and saved them, how God was keeping them. God is the one that's keeping them as they are in their present situation. We begin singing, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, Jesus, precious Savior, he's worthy to be praised. One said that she had been healed from dementia. She said she had been healed from dementia. She was told she would never think straight. Now, I wonder who told her that, <laughs> that she would never think straight. But she said, the devil is a liar. I had to look. She said, because now I can think clearly. I said, oh, that's a praise report. That's a praise report that she can think with her own mind, that she overcame whatever was going on in her body, in her mind at the time. That's a survival praise. She had a survival praise. Oh, he's worthy. We overcome by the power of our testimony and from the testimonies of others. Don't be afraid to tell your story because that was powerful. We are all victorious overcomers. We all have our own story. I'm quite sure you have your own story to tell. At the center, they started shouting. Those ladies and men, older men, and women, they started shouting. I couldn't believe it. They were singing and shouting and praising the Lord. They started uh, taking a hold of each other's arms. <laughs> you know, they were sitting side by side. They started grabbing on to each other. And one who could stand up, she stood up with her cane and she started dancing and shouting. I said, oh man. When one of the workers came in from the hallway, she came in, she was smiling, she joined us. They were praising the Lord despite their present condition. Despite being in wheelchairs, they were praising the Lord. They were praising God with all of their hearts. Oh, man, that's really something to see. It makes it worth, worth it. It makes serving others worth it to see that what God has done and what he can do. And here we are, here we are, we're able to walk and talk. We have the activities of our limbs, yet finding it hard to give God the glory, to give him praise. They were grabbing on to each other. And that just did for me, made me realize that what God has done, what he has done for me, if he can do it for them, he can do it for me. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. He's done it for you already. If you're sitting under the sound of my voice, you have a praise. And you want to offer up a survival praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. His praises, survival praises will be in my mouth. We shouldn't need a man. We shouldn't really need a band. We don't even need a preacher. All you really need is to think about the goodness of the Lord and what he has done. And you will begin to praise his holy name. Because he sure has kept many of us. When I think about the goodness of the Lord, what he's done for me, my soul, my soul cries out and says, thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. As I look back over my life, I can truly say that I've been blessed because he's kept me. He had angels watching over me. Angels, even when I wasn't aware, he protected me and guided me, allowed my life to just come to this point allowed me to land on my feet and I thank God for it. When I look back over my life, I can truly say I've been blessed, I have a testimony, and I have to praise the Lord to give him a survival praise. We see survival and we see physical and spiritual a survival throughout the word of God from the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. They survived. They went to but not but they relied on God's provision 
We uh, can think about Paul being shipwrecked and making it through on broken pieces. That's a story that we've heard over and over, but the part of the story that's so good is they all survived. They all survived on broken pieces. And God has brought many of us through on broken pieces. We've had some sh shipwreck situations, but we survived on broken pieces. Some are going through shipwrecks right now as we speak. So we're thankful that we serve a God who is able to allow us to come through. Whatever you go through, hang on to God's unchanging hand. He allows you to overcome. He will allow you to overcome your situation to survive. Survival is just not about enduring hardships, though. It's about growing through them. You grow through what you go through. Uh, it deepens your faith, your trials, deepen your faith and your understanding, and just provide hope and trust in God. With God, all things are possible. As Jesus prepared to depart from this, from this world, he knew that there would be difficult days ahead mm -hmm. for the disciples, even us. He told them that they could find peace in him. He told them to take heart because he had overcome the world. And that's the praise, that's the shout that God has already overcome the world. Jesus survived, <laughs> he beat death and he beat the grave. The devil was defeated through Jesus Christ. He was an overcomer. Jesus was an overcomer. Because of his resurrection, we are victorious overcomers. We can get up because he got up. We can survive. When the righteous cry out to the Lord, the Lord hears and he delivers them from all of their troubles. So we praise uh, the Lord for being our shelter from the storm, our secret pavilion. We praise him for being our strong tower where there's a domestic abuse or life-threatening a diagnosis even. We place our trust in him. We have to trust the Lord. Our survival is tied to our faith. It's tied to our faith. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up. <laughs> they will mount up <laughs> with wings of eagles. They will soar. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. When we are going through, we must seek the power and the presence of God. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord first. We must press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus during our times of hardship. Keep pushing. Keep pressing. We have a goal in mind. We are trying to reach the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We must be resilient. We must be resilient, have that bounce back attitude, and we must persevere and never give up, knowing that what we experience is growing us and it's teaching us and it's <laughs> enhancing us, it's building us up, it's teaching us to persevere. Grow through what you go through. Our strength is determined in the moments of trouble, not in good times. We see how strong we are in the hard times. But keep pressing. Praise God because he has made a way. How many know that God has made a way? Amen. When our back was against the wall. You haven't heard those black folks. Backs have always been against the wall. But when our backs are against the wall, when we were sick and down and out, when our loved ones passed away, when the enemy was fast on our track, the Lord. It was the Lord that made a way in our lives. And we praise him for it. Praise him for being there, for providing a way of escape, for bringing us out through the storms of life. Find, we found peace in the Lord through our relationship. Peace in the Lord is found through the relationship with Jesus. And so we need him to survive. We need the Lord to survive. We can't depend on ourselves. 
So I was told, we invite those who may not be in relationship with the Lord, Lord, who may not have experienced that peace that passes all understanding, who wonder how in the world am I going to make it through this? We invite you to get to know the Savior as we know the Savior, the one who will make a way for you in your life when your back is against the wall, when you find yourself not knowing what to do. We serve a God who is a healer and he is a deliverer. He will make a way for you. We find peace through him, through being in relationship with him, despite our circumstances. For salvation, just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. We all need Jesus. We all need a church home. We need a church family, really. We need to connect. Connect with each other. Friends, we invite you to connect with us to learn more about salvation. Learn more about this Lord who you can trust you. And the Lord who will make a way. We would love to have you as a part of our church family. He's made a way for many of us to help. If we look back at where we came from, how far he has brought us, we can see that he has made a way. And we're thankful for it. If you already know the Lord, keep praising Him for making a way in your life. Don't let anyone steal your joy. Don't let anybody steal your praise. Tell them, I serve a God who has made a way. And I'm glad about it. He's made a way. That we're standing here. Just tell him you're standing here because he has made a way. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> See, I'm moving now. Who he performs miracles? Nothing is impossible with our God. And we're standing here, I'm standing here, because he has made a way. He has made a way. If you need prayer, we are here to pray with you. We are here to pray for you. Pray to a God who can make a way, because he's able. For prayer or salvation, you can contact us via our website, or you can put a request in the comment section. We're always here. Uh, after the service, you can always walk up to any of us if you're in need of prayer. We are there to just help you to hold your hand. Amen? Amen. Amen. God has made a way. We're grateful for it. It is offering time. It is offering time. And we invite the stewards and the trustees to just come forward. Uh, <clears throat> to just sow into Anderson uh, Chapels. To our listeners, we believe that giving is a part of our weekly experience. One of the ways we show God that He is valuable to us is with our giving. We believe that we show God our commitment to the kingdom building by returning a portion of what he gives us back to him. We're grateful for your giving to this ministry. Your giving aids us in giving back to the community where needs are ever present. Anderson Chapel is a church that tied 100% and provides additional offerings. Will you help us by sowing seeds into this ministry by visiting our website at www.acame C-H-U-R-C-H dot O-R-G, where you may give to Givelify, PayPal, Cash App at dollar sign A-C-A-M-E 3788, or by sending a check to Anderson Chapel AME Church, Post Office Box 30791, Greenville, North Carolina.
1-800-273-2783. We thank you and may God continue to bless your mind, body, and soul. All things come of thee, O Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 We now have a benediction. We just say, Praise the Lord. Praise him, for he is good and he is worthy to be praised. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. Praise his holy name. Have hope, glory in your sufferings. Offer up a survival praise. Amen. 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 That's why benediction. Go forth praising the Lord. Offering him a survival praise. Thanking him. Thanking him for bringing you through. May his grace and peace be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Survival grace.